everyone. I'm Sarah Bagan for Tell Us All English. Joining us today from London is Imam Ajmal Masroud, who is a member of the Muslim Council of Britain. Ajmal, hello, welcome to the program. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, I can. Hello. Okay, so recently we have heard the tragic news of the events in Paris. What are your views on the Charlie Hebdo massacre and the recent attacks that followed? Of course, we all unanimously condemn what's happened. No journalist, no person, no people. Nobody should be constrained from expressing their views and no lives should be lost as a result of that. And those who have perpetrated that crime, that murder, have done and have done an attack on the rest of us, the entire universe. In fact, every single human being should feel attacked. So there is no justification whatsoever for what's happened in Paris. And those who have done it, they haven't done it in the name of Islam and certainly not representing any Muslim views whatsoever. So when Charlie Hebdo published the cartoons on the Prophet Muhammad and other relating to Islam, how did you perceive this? Were you insulted by it? And did you think this was an attack on your religion? Well, this particular magazine has a habit of attacking those who are most vulnerable, those who are weak in the society, and those who don't have voice because they think they can get away with it. They don't attack the bankers. They don't attack the multinationals. They don't attack the arms traders. So they do particularly target people who are vulnerable. Not that long ago, the same magazine was criticized for attacking as well as uh, publishing something that was anti-Semitic. The magazine was apologized, or they apologized, forced to, and the person who drew those cartoons were sacked. Now, this magazine is well known for satire, but ridiculing people for causing offense. And this is not a good record to have. None of us like it, but in Europe, in the world, there is freedom of speech. And freedom of speech must be respected. And we must give that to this magazine or any other magazine for that matter. If they want to, they can, but they should also be responsible for what they publish and what they say. And when they're responsible, law may be turned against them, such, it, such as it was done for the anti-Semitic article or the cartoon that was published. So, staying on that note, the new edition of Charlie Hebdo is set to feature another cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. After the recent incidents, how likely do you think they are to face another attack? And how do you think people will respond to it, both Muslims and non-Muslims worldwide? I think we're living in a, an age of extreme. Charlie Hebdo's uh, responsible irresponsible attitude in reprinting the cartoon that offends 1.8 billion Muslims across the globe is in itself a crazy, lunatic, extreme response, just like the extreme response that we've seen from the fanatics on the other side who carried out the murder. Extremism does not win the hearts and minds of people. I find the approach that uh, this magazine has taken uh, deplorable. I think this is silly. You can be as stubborn as you like, but that's not going to change what's happening around. We need to be responsible, sensitive and sensible. We need to win the hearts and minds of people. And you're not going to do that by kicking people while they're down. If Muslims, 1.8 billion of them, find the depiction of the Prophet in a cartoon format that are insulting, that are rude and nasty, offensive, why not listen to it? If we don't become responsible with one another, we'll create wars. Yes, of course, we all have the right to criticize. So criticize all you like, but you don't have to criticize and ridicule at the same time. Why ridicule? That doesn't achieve any goal or doesn't bring any harmony and peace in the society, does it? Okay. Can you please explain to us what you think is the root of the cause resulting in extremist behavior? Extremism stems from ignorance, hatred of the other, complete and utter denial of the realities around, and twisted ideas and twisted interpretation of events around people. So in the, the case of those fanatics who carried out the murder, they understood the world in a particular way. And the magazine, Charlie Hebdo, has understood the world in a particular way. Both of them are extreme. And do you know, and we know, that two wrongs don't make it right ever. So I say very simply, in order to overcome extremism, we need to become enlightened. And enlightenment comes through knowledge. 
and manifestation of people who are enlightened is that they are tolerant, they are respectful, that they are sensitive and sensible, whether they are from the worlds of journalism or from the masses of the communities. We need to create a world where we are all responsible, compassionate, as well as respecting of one another's religions, cultures and views. Okay. Um... On that note, you say by becoming knowledgeable, one is enlightened. Is there any way in the Quran that references to extremism or suggests this in any way? No, of course not. Quran does not uh, in, a, in any way uh, condone extremism. In fact, it condemns it. It says very categorically, there's a verse in the Quran which says, uh, and God has created you as a moderate nation who are balanced in the middle. The Prophet himself has taught us that we should all remain balanced right in the middle, never be extreme, for extremism will destroy us. Now, those who resort to extremism, they resort to extremism because of their fanatical views of the world, because of their twisted ideas, because of their ignorance. The only way to eliminate it is not to blame the religion or the text. For religion and the text is a harmonizing, balancing and a moderating uh, tool for the masses. If those people are ignorant about it, teach them about their religion. If those people who are from the magazine, Tali Hebdo, are ignorant about Islam, teach them about Islam. Maybe one day they will see the truth behind this religion. Maybe they will also be seeing to be respecting the Prophet. I say criticize the Prophet all you like, but be sensible and be respecting of other people's views. Okay, and what does Islam actually teach about uh, killing in the name of religion? What can you say about that? Islam doesn't teach anyone to kill or take innocent lives of people. The only time when um, war or an attack has happened um, and there is a warfare going on is only when one is allowed to fight back. Otherwise, taking one life, innocent life, is like taking the lives of the entire humanity. And saving one life, it is like saving the lives of the entire humanity. And this must be respected. This is in the Quran, by the way. We cannot go around taking lives, we cannot go around destroying home, homes and properties, we cannot do any of that, whether it is individuals or government. Remember illegal wars, invasion of foreign countries, sovereign countries, attacking and destroying people's homes and wedding bands using drones. They are no better than the lunatics who have attacked uh, the journalists in Charlie Hebdo's magazine um, in their headquarters. We need to all rise and become better people, not carrying on with violence, for violence breeds further violence. Okay, on Wednesday, just before the Kawachi brothers drove away in their car um, in Paris after the attack, they mentioned they were avenging the Prophet Muhammad. Can you please explain how Muslims are taught to honor the Prophet? Well, this is a twisted idea. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and God, does not need, they do not need our protection or do not need avenging their honor. They have, a God is the provider of all protection and honor and Muhammad is his messenger. He does not, and Prophet did not invite his companions to do the same. When Prophet was alive, remember he was mocked by people on a regular basis. It's mentioned in the Quran. In fact, Prophet himself had to read those verses, repeating the words of mockery that was used by people around him. He didn't organize demonstrations. He didn't organize vigilante actions. He didn't go out in warfare just because people mocked him. So Prophet doesn't need our mockery. or our, He doesn't need us to defend anyone who's mocking him. What the Prophet needs is for us to emulate him, to become compassionate, to show care, to show concern, to become relevant, to be involved in society, to transform ourselves from within and around to, share, to be kind and merciful to our neighbors and our friends and our families. Those are the ways we will protect and uh, uh, honor the Prophet and his legacy. Okay, according to various reports, there has been an increase in Islamophobia around the world. What impact do you think these recent attacks, as well as other terrorist activity, has on the mainstream Muslim population, not only in Europe, but around the world? I think the activities that are perpetrated by terrorists, extremists, have a knock-on effect on everybody. But they are all part and parcel of a bigger problem. The bigger problem is our governments in the West, especially Britain, America, France, and the bigger powers, have pursued a very twisted foreign policy and unethical foreign policies. 
And policies where they had rule for one communities and a different rule for another. Take the example of Israel. Palestinians have been suffering for more than 60 years. And yet America and Britain and European countries have done very little to solve their problems. Imagine, take the example of invasion of Iraq illegally. Take the example of America's drones destroying people in Yemen, in Somalia, in Pakistan, in Afghanistan. These are some of the problems or these are the reasons why I believe people become angrier and angrier by the day. So what we need to do is eliminate those irresponsible foreign policies and unethical foreign policies. We also need to challenge and eradicate the ideologies of hate perpetrated by the extremists. And it's only when we do them together we'll be successful. If we don't do them together and do them in isolation, we'll see further proliferation of violence and extremism in the world. And neither you nor I or anyone in the world wants to see this. Okay. And how do you think Muslims and non-Muslims can work together and unite together to combat any further attacks as well as uh, from not only terrorism, but also Islamophobia? We need to rise together and say not in our name, whether it is an attack on Muslim or a non-Muslim, it makes no difference. We need to tell our leaders not in our name. We need to tell extremists not in our name. We need to tell the multinationals who are holding governments hostage often to pursue a particular agenda not in our name. We need to challenge the immoral, unethical activities in the world and say not in our name. So we need to unite and, of course, become a people who are determined and united together against hatred, violence and extremism. But more than that, we need to promote good and virtue in the world. If we don't, then the world will become uh, filled with evil. And if we're going to challenge evil, we need to become better people. There is a verse in the Quran where God says, and replace evil with something that is better. And my message and message of Islam is replace this in this world with better morality, more virtue, more compassion and more kindness. Okay, thank you very much, Ajmal, for that. That was very uh, insightful. As always, thank you for watching. For more information, you can visit us at our website, telesawtv.net slash English. For Telesaw English, I'm Sarah Begum. Have a good day.